A very warm welcome to all the students. I am Aisha Mathur, Associate Professor at School of Architecture, Gilgotias University. And today uh, we will be taking uh, the architectural design uh, lecture on the vernacular architecture of Kutch in Gujarat under the module vernacular. So uh, in the previous uh, lectures, you all have understood uh, what vernacular architecture is. It is basically characterized by the use of local material knowledge and it is usually built without the supervision of professional architects. And the vernacular architect, uh, architecture it basically represents majority of buildings and settlements created in the pre-industrial societies and it includes a wide range of buildings and building tradition and also there are many different methods of constructions. Uh, vernacular buildings are typically they are very simple and uh, you know they can be either houses or they can be built for other purposes. So let's start with the lecture and we will uh, today we will particularly focus what happens in the region of Kutch in Gujarat. So what are the prerequisites for this paper? Uh, firstly, you should have uh, information about the general terminologies of vernacular architecture, uh, such as and also about some building materials that we use there like mud and thatch roofs. So uh, you should, because we'll be talking about all these terms in this lecture, you should have some awareness on these. Then secondly, you should have uh, clarity on the concepts of climatic regions in India and around the world. So if we talk about uh, Rajasthan area, Gujarat area, you should know what kind of uh, climate fluctuates you actually have or if you are going on to the, you know, Eastern side and say northeast states, so you should know what kind of climate lies there. Or similarly, for the north, northern areas and southern areas, and a general idea uh, of the climatic zones all around the world. So, and thirdly, you should have awareness about the local material available in different uh, regions of India because uh, today, especially in this lecture, we'll be we are concentrating uh, on the particular part uh, in India only. So, you should have some kind knowledge about the local materials then understanding of sustainable design practice because uh, vernacular architecture mostly comprises of uh, you know uh, energy efficient designs so uh, you should have some knowledge on this topic as well and then lastly you should have knowledge about the common comfort daylighting natural ventilation so all these concepts will be they are the last two concepts are interlinked and uh, they will be very well talked about in the lecture we are going to have today. So now let us talk about the objectives. What are the major heads that we will be covering in this lecture? Firstly, we will be talking about the location, the climate and the economy of Kutch. Then secondly, we will talk about the art and craft of this place because both, as you all know, we have been talking about that both art and architecture are uh, totally connected in uh, many of the places and uh, in vernacular architecture, especially in any of the regions, you will see that they have a very strong connection. Then thirdly, we will talk about the settlement pattern. Uh, we'll talk about the streets, what goes on, and the general, uh, you know, placement of the houses or the buildings in this region. Then we will talk what are about the local techniques. Uh, what are the construction methodologies they take up to make the architectural uh, more uh, sustainable? Then we will talk about this is the main uh, thing we'll be talking about. Uh, the the main. Uh, construction here or the house here it is called as bunga so we will talking it will talk about bunga design what all element it has and how it is made and lastly we will talk about the major architectural characteristic and the style of the architecture seen here so let us talk about the first point uh, which is location first uh, as you all know that the Kutch is the largest uh, district in the state of Gujarat and it is the second largest uh, district in the uh, country and it is a peninsular mainland which is surrounded by water which comes from the southwest to the hinterland through various inlets of Arabian Sea. So on this map on the right side you can see Indian map that here is the region of Kutch which we are discussing right now. 
then it is surrounded by arabian sea on this side and uh, this is the geographical location in longitudes and latitudes which is given here then if we talk about the climate uh, the rainfall is all about uh, 340 mm per annum and uh, the region uh, falls in the semi arid areas 73% of land here is considered as barren and a uh, forest only covers about 6 0.3% in this uh, territory and in this area you will find that the humidity and uh, the salinity uh, in the soil it is very high it is very high and uh, kutch it has a tropical type of uh, climate a monsoon climate and generally the very, the rainy season it stretches from june to september and the region is uh, bec uh, because it is in the desert area it, it is very prone to droughts and hot waves and also earthquakes the temperature ranges from 4 degree celsius in winters to 45 degree celsius in summer so you see that there is a wide uh, varying range of temperature and the average wind speed is about 11 kilometers per hour while the relative humidity is about 60% so uh, if we talk about the economy now uh, with it, the agriculture and cattle breeding is the main source of livelihood uh, the kutch is often considered to be economically backward the farmland is because you see that the forest the area which we we are able to cultivate it is only uh, approximately 6.3% and we saw earlier also that only uh, that 73% of the land is barren so uh, the uh, farms are also not very uh, well developed and um, the farmland is uh, basically located in the area between the gulf of kutch and the run and scanty agricultural produce consists mainly several of uh, varieties of uh, cereals so mostly cereals are uh, grown here not uh, much of uh, vegetables are available fruits and vegetables are available in this region and uh, the main source of livelihood here for the people living in the northern part is cattle breeding and there are some uh, ethnic groups also uh, known as rabaris and aharis and charans who temporarily migrate with their herds in search of pastures and water so nomadic uh, activity is very well pre prevalent here and the craft sector uh, you know it has also unfolded from a household activity to a profitable trade so the crafts is very famous so we'll, in the next slide we'll be discussing about arts and crafts also and then you will get a better idea of what i'm talking about and the region you know it is now experiencing these days uh, some degree of industrial development with the introduction of various industries such as uh, cement plant so uh, there has been some kind of improvement since uh, you know independence and uh, the transportation the roads and you know all these things have improved and uh, the region will uh, certainly improve in the coming future also now let us talk about the art and craft uh, in this region the uh, arts produced here you know it is famous all around the world and as we have discussed in the previous slides also since uh, you know there is not much of uh, you know uh, stable occupation uh, found here so people are involved in these activities the quality and the refinement of local art go hand in hand with the variety of craft work produced by the ethnic group so these uh, groups these tribals you know they are uh, so uh, good and they are so creative that you can see here on the right hand side the kind of uh, work they produce they are, they are beautiful uh, wall decorations in this figure you can see and they are done on the fabrics uh, the work which they do it includes refined uh, embroidery which is typical of the kutchi art Uh, the patchwork embroidery on leathers uh, the fabric printed using uh, natural pigments such as ajrak batik uh, block painting tie and dye or bandhani which is known as and the finest of woolen and cotton weaving so uh, they do all kind of artwork on fabrics as well as leathers 
and uh, you know other form of artwork and crafts it uh, includes uh, wood carving pottery silver engraving jewelry and belt productions uh, mural decorations on earthen walls so this is the kind of range they have here in the art and craft department uh, and if to com it is as if they are compensating for the absence of the desired nature around so they try to create nature of different colors and you know uh, different uh, types of patterns uh, using their imaginations the carpentry work mainly produces structural components uh, such as doors windows decorations and so any if any one of you would have been to this region or maybe if you would have been to the neighboring state of rajasthan also so you will find that uh, you will find beautiful uh, artifacts uh, of uh, wood crafting and uh, traditional designs are carved on these doors and windows and uh, they show the style and skills of the craftsmen they are so famous that you know you will see that people uh, are uh, you know importing them and exporting them in all over the country and all over the world and another form of craft is the decoration of walls with clay and mirrors this is also very typical of this region the harijan and rabari women you know they are traditional expert in producing symbols and images and geometric designs and flowers in clay relief so clay relief is also a uh, part of their art and crafts uh, wherein small mirrors are often mounted on these uh, relief works and they serve to multiply the light in the interiors so see they are using their uh, you know creativity and intelligence so they are using mirrors and they are they are trying to increase the light you know without uh, using any artificial form of uh, light in the uh, interiors now let us move on to the settlement pattern in this region so here we will find that the habitat uh, in this tropical climate region is a composition of open semi open and enclosed spaces interwoven together forming the public and private realm and it is collectively called the built form or the built environment so uh, if you will uh, talk about the streets you will see the pattern is curvilinear in nature and number of streets you know radiate from one street in different directions so it is very typical of what happens in the indian scenario that there is one street uh, if you see in this figure below and there are multiple streets almost branching out in different directions so it is like a, a network of you know water streams while walking toward the village in the interior regions the street becomes quite narrow and finely carved entrance for row houses with repetitive main entrance doors with two small niches and two long windows on both sides are seen so this is the uh, branching out of the streets and you will see these houses they are uh, stacked uh, in line and uh, the streets take angular turns at intervals and all the houses have mangalo tiles sloping roofs and they are constantly turning in curves and never remaining straight in particular direction through small chocks of y shaped where it branches out in two third direction and again keep turning see this is what is happening this y shape you can see here and it is branching out from all the directions then the entire village is basically a mesh of these curvilinear uh, streets which connect the chocks and the curvilinear streets are formed by staggering each house by a few feet okay so i think this uh, settlement pattern is clear on this slide we will now we'll move on to the next slide so continuing on the uh, uh, you know settlement pattern here you will find that uh, the narrow street width varies from 8 feet to 18 feet uh, which serves both pedestrian uh, the cattle movement the carts and whatever light uh, vehicles they have 
the houses have a frontage of uh, 10 to 15 feet width with the height of scale uh, of street facade walls change as per the number of stories so on this image if you see the uh, two story one is taller of course and the single story one is uh, shorter in height so this street section might vary as uh, as per the people living here and this uh, street between them it caters to the all kind of movement then another typical feature is that if we enter a house on one side of the street the entry is in a room while on the opposite side of the street the entry is into the court of the house so see here on this image so if you are entering this house you will have a room on the entrance and on the opposite side side there is a house where the entrance is through a courtyard so this is a type of pattern which they follow okay so uh, this way you will not find that the street is narrowing down and what is the uh, you know uh, other advantage of this that this helps to protect their privacy and it also helps in the flow of wind so uh, they channelize the natural uh, you know winds and uh, they uh, you know try to accommodate natural ventilation uh, through this method and uh, they are facing the opposite uh, since these courts and these uh, rooms are facing you know the opposite uh, on, on the facing on the opposite side you know they are uh, you will never see that there is a direct uh, line of sight into the house so uh, you know we can adopt these kind of methods in our uh, you know modern day design approach as well so uh, you know how carefully these people have you know um, taken care of uh, even the little things such as privacy and uh, the sustainable design practices such as natural ventilation and you will see that uh, you'll find in this area that you know the even only if it is for three, uh, you know after three to four years the initial rainfall is very high so you will find that uh, the roofs of these uh, areas are conical and uh, they are uh, you know which you will not find in any other uh, region of uh, of the desert area so they don't have flat terraces so that confirms that you know uh, since they get rainfall whenever they get it they get it of a high range so they their roof is in this shape so on this slide you will see uh, the traditional house here which is known as uh, bhunga okay so bhunga consists of a single cylindrical shaped room and this type of house is quite durable and appropriate for prevalent uh, desert conditions and it is basically made of mud and wooden reinforcement in the form of tree branches and uh, ropes and uh, you know a structure of twigs and branches uh, are created in cylindrical form which are then sandwiched by applying mud on either side so ranging between uh, you know anything between 3.5 to 6 meter in diameter they are spanned through a wooden log across with standing king post in the center of the log and the supports uh, um, and this supports the radiating branches of the conical roof uh, by cross bracing the uh, braided ropes and uh, the twigs so this is the cylindrical room you can see here this is a cross section this is the king post and it is supporting the whole uh, roof structure which is created with the uh, branches and twigs and this on the right side here you will see it is a uh, typical plan of uh, the bhanga and uh, see, see you there is a veranda for women and there is a place for women and child because the society and the culture also reflects so there are separate male and female spaces and uh, again a room for men this is the gathering space the kitchen and the storage space so you can have multiple units of this also this typical they can be multiple units to combine one single unit so this is the elevation of this corresponding plan so uh, and what this design basically does is that the circular design and the mesh of the mud so how this mud mesh which we made with the plaster and the twigs it resists any uh, wind pressure and it helps to strengthen the 
uh, structure during any kind of earthquakes which come. So this is the very typical uh, or very traditional uh, construction. And uh, now uh, when we talked about the modifications in the previous slide uh, with compressed uh, earth blocks and uh, with you know reinforcement of steels, uh, this that has come later. So this was the one which started uh, first. Now you will see a few images of this uh, Bhanga clusters. Uh, see on this first image you will see the thatch roof which is coming down till almost the windows and uh, then you will see this is almost a, a picture taken uh, you know while uh, standing down and looking at the roof upwards and on this third image you can see that uh, you know artistry on the walls and you can see both the types of the modern interpretation is this one and this is the very uh, typical traditional one with thatch roof and here it has the mangalore tiles. So if you are to cut a section through the dwelling, you will see that, uh, you know, the major components are plinth, the circular closed space and the open areas. So this is the open area and this is the plinth where it stands and the circular enclosed space. So inside you have basically mud flooring, here is a window which is there and the rafters are going, the cladding of the thatch roofs or mangalore tiles, whatever is there. The king post is basically supporting the entire structure and there is a cross tie beam which is uh, running here to support the entire structure. So just to give you all a quick revision, the circular mud house, it is an integration of exact geometry and property of materials for the climatic conditions to evolve a perfect architectural form of the housing. And the materials which are used here are locally available and the habitants themselves build the house. And why the circular plan, why not a rectangle or why not a square? So the reason is this, that the circular plan efficiently compares the uh, square plan where the perimeter to enclosed area ratio is lower than the uh, circular house. And the um, platforms are closely placed and the residual spaces between them acts as pathways for movements. Uh, the thorny bushes envelop uh, the settlement and act as fence for a protective shield against the hot winds and dust storms. On the arrival from the highway, one only finds uh, grass fence and projected conical thatch roofs against the sky. So again, there are multiple images. You can see how uh, this all works. And uh, here you will see a diagram showing the flow of wind according to Venturi effect along the central shaft of a modern bhanga. So this is a modern interpretation, you know, including, uh, you know, this is accommodating the uh, modern concepts, uh, the uh, not a modern, but, uh, you know, uh, climatic uh, concepts of Venturi effect. So this Venturi effect you will be studying in the upcoming uh, climatic uh, responsive architecture module uh, in this semester. So you will have get more clarity on that. So now let us just conclude this lecture and I'll give you all a small assignment. So this is the assignment. Uh, what you all have to basically do is that you have to write a short note uh, on the following three type of main traditional building techniques which are seen in Kutch since we were talking about uh, Kutch today. So you will have to talk about the earthen blocks which are, which are known as adobe. And then you have to talk about the earth reinforced with uh, wood or sometimes with bamboo. It is called wattle and daub. And uh, the stack walls or in situ walls. So uh, you basically have to make wall sections or whatever drawings you can find. You can add pictures and you have to write short note on this. So you will get a deeper understanding on how the bhunga uh, construction works and uh, how the construction in the basically area of Kutch in Gujarat works. And uh, these days we are using all, all of these technologies in modern design approach as well. So uh, you will find it very interesting uh, in, you know, when you will try to accommodate the same in your architectural design as well. So I hope you all uh, understood the today's, uh, the, you know, nitty gritties in today's lecture and you, uh, you enjoyed it. 
and uh, we will continue with architectural design uh, in the upcoming classes we will talk about more places uh, and their vernacular architecture in the next lecture thank you all for attending